Hi, everyone. It's been a week since I shared an idea that I had on my website about virtual classroom libraries. Since then, and it's only been a week, seems like forever ago, I've heard from so many teachers, literacy leaders, educators, kids, parents. Um, I've been truly overwhelmed um, by the outreach people um, have done. And everyone's first instinct has been like, how can I help? What can we do? How can we support teachers? So we began to think and plan and revise and try some new things. And what I wanna talk with you about today is a virtual book room. I'm so thankful to all the people who Zoomed with me, talked with me, experimented with me, tried with me. Um, and last week when I shared the original uh, virtual classroom library, I was using Google Docs because um, that's what my partner schools were using and it seemed like it would make sense. But throughout this past week, um, as we really were striving to make this as simple and easy for teachers to be able to literally go to a space and grab baskets and add them to their classroom library virtually, going from a virtual book room to a virtual classroom library, it quickly became apparent that Padlet may be an easier platform. You can still do everything I'm about to show in Google Docs, and I will continue to support that as well. But today I wanna to share with you this idea of using Padlet. So let me show you what it's gonna look like. So this is a virtual book room in Padlet. You can see it looks similar to what I showed um, in Google Docs in that there's virtual bins um, and the organization of it. Rather than being in a grid by one section of a classroom library, um, this book room would support all different sections of a classroom library. So we would have a section to support independent reading, topic and interest. We would have for series for independent reading. We would have a section for read alouds that kids would be able to listen to read alouds. We would have a section to support kids as writers um, and to have them be able to read in depth around a certain theme or character work that they might wanna do in the upper grades for independent reading, passion and inquiry projects and also support them and looking at crafts of particular authors. So, this book room, the way the digital bins work are really similar to last week. Again, there's a different basket on all different types. I've organized K through one and a little bit into second in bands of complexity. Um, I don't wanna level kids, but I do want teachers to know about what the range of complexity is to support students in accessing text that's easy for them to read. The research really shows that having lots of exposure to text that you can read easily and comprehend easily is really gonna help you grow as a reader. So I have organized these for the lower grades um, into bands of complexity. And then beyond that, for the upper grades, I'll start to be organizing them more in terms of themes and character traits and genres and other ways that kids might begin to explore um, text as well as series. So once you're in a particular section, like if we look at in this section here, all of the books in this bin will be about animals and they'll all be within the complexity of levels A through C. So just like a digital bin that we showed last week, you would click on this and it will take you to a bin where there are all different books about animals that kids can access, right? So here's a book about sloths. And if you click on it, you have to sign in. So I did this so that you could see some of the platforms. You need to have an account in order to be able to open it or your students need to know how to sign in. So that's one thing you're gonna to have to think about. There's other accounts where that's not the case, um, that when you open it, you automatically, it just takes you right there if a teacher has an account, like for example, this one. So some of these things, once you open it, you're gonna to have to play around a little bit. You may take some off if you don't use that platform and just simply delete it um, and add other books, but we're hoping that the system and the structure can really support you. So here's why we think Padlet is easier and possibly the better platform. 
let's pretend that I decided I have kids who are really interested in familiar tales. It's part of my curriculum and I wanna add this basket to my classroom library. I simply go up, right? When you, when you hover over the basket, you'll get this little piece here that has the three dots. You'll click on transfer post. You can then decide what Padlet board you wanna transfer it to. So I could decide I wanna put that in my classroom library. So I simply would click. And then if I go to my classroom library, Second, you can see Familiar Tales was added there. It takes one push of a button and you automatically can grab and go to your baskets. In the same way, you could decide you have some kids for whom the complexity of your books um, might not match who they are as readers and you may wanna give them a different experience. You could create student reading bags for a child or a group of kids in your class um, to better meet or differentiate their needs for lots of different reasons. So let's pretend in my class, I wanted to be able to do that. I still wanted to have this idea of familiar tales, but I wanted familiar tales that were more going to match the needs of particular group kids in my class. I would then think about a different level of complexity rather than the DE complexity. I might look at the AC. Again, I hover over this basket, I click, transfer post, and I might put it in a student independent reading basket. I could then look at that student independent reading basket and you can see there was already a lap out lab basket and I just added the familiar tales basket. I could assign this independent reading bag or shelf to a certain group of kids in my classroom. I could just share it with five kids or six kids. I could also decide that I'm going to create an entire classroom library and have everyone choose within that classroom library, right? It's really up to you and how you feel like it's going to work. You may decide that you wanna add for your kids some read alouds, right? You might decide that you think that for your kids, they would really love to hear some books aloud and that could be a nice opportunity. So you could make a read aloud section, right, in your classroom library. So I might go over to my classroom library. If this was your library, you can add, right, a section or a column um, within that and you could call it sort of read aloud and then you can go ahead and add that for them. So I go into my read aloud section, I can transfer it into my virtual classroom library. And then you can see I've added a read aloud. So what I'm hoping for is that this is gonna be really, really simple for teachers to be able to access to create their own and to get books into the hands of kids um, as easily as possible and to be able to rotate your inventory as quickly and as easily as possible. All of the resources on this public Padlet board meet the fair use laws. I'm only using resources that right now publishers, authors, and illustrators have generously allowed us to access um, and to use with our kids. Anything that is being read aloud, that's not shared in this way, that you may be doing privately, I ask that you keep that private board for your classroom and you don't put it on the web. I really wanna honor and support the publishers, the authors and the illustrators who are doing so much to support us as educators right now by keeping this board um, adhering to the fair use laws. You can remake this Padlet board as many times as you want. You can take as many resources as you want. But again, I ask that you don't share anything that doesn't adhere to the fair use laws publicly. If you happen to see someone who is doing that or someone who's charging to use it on a certain platform, I can't control what people are gonna do with it. But I certainly hope um, you call them out on it and that we really work together to support our publishers, our authors, and our illustrators. If you want to help in any way, um, I have lots of people who are offering to help. You can email me a digital bin. You could send me um, a basket via Padlet. I am asking to see things first before I add it to this public board. I, I'm not allowing editing rights to this public board. I just wanna check out and make sure that everything adheres to the fair use laws before I add it to the public board. So I'll do my best to keep up with it. I'm also committed to adding baskets every day. 
if you subscribe to the board, you'll get um, a notification when I've updated content. So I have lots of bins ready to go and be added that I'm gonna be adding over the next few days. Um, and lots of people who are offering to help with that work too. I can't wait to hear from you. Please let me know what's working, what's not working, what ideas you have to make it even better. Because um, I truly think if we come together and we share the load and we support one another, we will be better together. Thanks everyone.